Today we're going to take a look at the Bontrager Mini Charger. This is my favorite compact bike pump and it's the one that I currently take with me whenever I'm bikepacking or bike touring. So let's take a look at the pros, the cons and why I think it's worth consideration. All right guys, before we get into it, I'd appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel. We create bikepacking and bike touring related videos with everything from gear reviews to tutorials to the occasional overnighter video. And don't forget to check out the main feature of the channel, our 93 part series documenting our tour of Australia. All right, so let's take a close up look at the Bontrager Mini Charger. All right, before we get into this one, I just need to apologize. I've had this pump for about two years now. So the original packaging is long gone, can't show you that. And also the bracket that you can use to connect the pump to the frame of your bike. But this review is about the pump itself. So let's take a look. As you can see, the pump folds up really nicely. It has a very long hose, which clips into place here. And then the chuck has a little clip on it, which slots into a notch here, keeping everything nice and neat. So if we unfold it, you'll see the, the hose is so long, I can barely get it in frame here, which is great. That makes it super easy to get to the valve without having to like finagle it into just the right spot. It also means you're gonna put less stress on the valve by tugging on it. This hose has plenty of give and it's gonna be really gentle on your valve. So the way this pump works is it basically folds into a mini track pump. You fold out this foot rest here, clips into place and you stand on that. This handle rotates sideways and this lets you get plenty of purchase. You can get all your weight behind this as you're pumping. And it means you don't get as fatigued as a regular, you know, traditional pump. Now the foot is really sturdy. It looks like it's made out of aluminum. I did see a review where someone managed to break this pin and the whole thing fell out. But after two years of fairly frequent use, mine stayed put, seems pretty sturdy. The handle is surprisingly ergonomic, seeing as it's just a cylinder, but it's just the right width that it's really comfy to use. This section unscrews for easy servicing. You can grease up the gaskets or replace them if you've had it a while. And overall, it's just a pretty nicely designed and engineered bit of kit. All right, onto the chuck. The chuck is really nicely made. Push it on the valve pull this lever to lock it in place and pump up the tire, push the lever back in to remove. Now this gives it a real advantage over the other popular pump that's out there because that pump requires you to screw the chuck on and off of the valve. And sometimes as you're unscrewing it, you can take the valve core out with the pump, which isn't ideal. You end up dumping out all the air that you've just spent 10 minutes putting in the tire. Pretty frustrating but you're not gonna have that problem with this. If you unscrew this, the valve in there can be rotated to accommodate either Presta or Schrader. I've never needed to do that, I always use Presta, but it's nice to have it there. And finally, we have a pressure gauge, which is super nice to have in a little pump like this. Not many travel-friendly pumps have a gauge included and I would much rather have an integrated pressure gauge than have to carry uh, one in addition to the pump. Now the pressure gauge I don't think is accurate but despite that it is consistent so it might be the wrong pressure that you're reading but it's consistently wrong if you get what I mean. It means you'll always be able to get your tires to the same pressure even if that pressure isn't perhaps what it says it is. So it's still pretty useful. So that's probably about as much as I can say about the features of the pump itself. It's pretty straightforward. So let's go and have a look at how it pumps up a tire. All right, so I've got my touring bike here and I've fully deflated the front tire. This is a 700 by 48 mil tire. So it's fairly high volume. We're getting into kind of gravel bike territory. 
so let's see how long it takes to pump it up. All right, so I lost count there, but it was somewhere just over 100. I'll flash it up on the screen now. Pretty impressive, really. Better than any mini pump I've ever used. So um, let's see how it copes with a high volume mountain bike tire. All right, guys, same deal. This is a 2.4 inch 29er enduro tire. So plenty of air volume in there. Let's see how this pumps it up. And as a bonus, I think when I was deflating this, I might have accidentally taken the bead off of the rim slightly. So uh, hopefully it can cope with that. Woo, whoa, that scared me. But uh, I think point proven. All right, so that took a little bit more effort, but still way better than any other mini pump I've used. And it even managed to seat the bead, which is more than you can ask for from a mini pump. I didn't measure the pressure for either of those tires, so this isn't a scientific test but I know for a fact it's close enough and wouldn't take much adjustment to get it where I want it. So let's go wrap this up. All right, so now that we've taken a look at the pump, let's go through the likes and the dislikes. So the first thing I like about this is that it has great air volume. Some mini pumps take forever to pump up a tire. And although this isn't as good as a proper track pump, it still does a pretty good job and can inflate a tire relatively quickly. I also really dig the long hose. It makes the pump much easier to use and it means you aren't stressing the valve by accidentally pulling on it. The mini track pump design makes it so ergonomic to use and I find you get much less fatigued when you're using this compared to a conventional pump. This chuck is really good, I really like it. It's easy to connect and disconnect, and it won't accidentally unscrew your valve core like certain other popular pumps. And finally, it's really great that it has a pressure gauge. And that leads me on to the first dislike, which is that although they very graciously included this pressure gauge, it's not very accurate. It's consistent enough that you can make sure your pressure is always the same, but it probably isn't the pressure that you think it is. Maybe I'm expecting too much, but I would like a reasonably accurate reading from this. Now, certain parts of this pump also feel a little bit flimsy. Now, I haven't had any issues with it yet, and nothing's broke, nothing to report yet, but it doesn't exactly inspire confidence when you're far from civilization. So finally, a tiny little niggle is the, this little clip here that holds the chuck in place um, comes undone really, really easily and can sort of rattle about. Not really a big deal, but you know. All right, so that's it. I've been super impressed with this little pump and it's made a great addition to my bike packing and bike touring toolkit. I think it's a very attractive proposition compared to the other popular bike packing pump that's out there especially seeing as it doesn't unscrew your valve core and dump all the air out after you just spent 10 minutes inflating a fat bike tire. All right, guys, what do you think? I think this is a great little pump. And you know, you don't hear much about them. I haven't really seen anyone using them, which is so unusual because I would not hesitate to recommend this. So what do you guys think? Leave a comment below, like if you enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you next time.